In this week's weekly funny story jokes, we bring you our best funny story joke compilation of the week. These story jokes are sure to make you laugh from the first one to the last one. These are our story jokes, which we love to generate. This week, we bring you four story jokes, starting with a story about a guy with a weird rash until we finish with a hilarious story about a marriage counselor. Please watch to the end as we keep the best one for last. So sit back, get the popcorn, and get ready to laugh until your stomach aches. In our first funny story of the day, we bring you a medical mishap and a guy with a rash. Calling all history buffs and giggle lovers. Get ready for today's funny story joke that's a medical mystery tour through time. Imagine doctors back in the day diagnosing you by your tongue color and prescribing something that smells like grandma's attic and tastes suspiciously like dirt tea. Now picture hospitals with enough acronyms to make your head spin and bills that could launch a rocket to the moon to escape those bills. Buckle up because a penny-pinching businessman walks into a doctor's office with a very puzzling rash. Stay tuned, folks. This punchline's a doozy. A tale of two traditions, a wacky look at how we used to patch ourselves up and still do, kinda. Ah, healthcare. The glorious land of needles, enough jargon to make a parrot cry and bills that could buy a small island nation. But fear not, intrepid explorer of overpriced band-aids. Today, we embark on a historical comedy tour of medical practices in China and America proving that even the most serious topics can be a laugh riot. Just don't faint from it. That would require actual medical attention. China, acupuncture, emperors, and herbs that might be dirt. China boasts a medical tradition older than your great, 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 great grandma. We're talking over 3000 years of history. Back then, fancy doctors honed their skills in herbal remedies and a technique called Pulse diagnosis, which basically involved feeling your wrist and hoping for the best. Imagine having a dedicated physician whose sole job was to make sure you didn't keel over from a hangnail. That was life for Chinese emperors. They were all about preventative care, which is why they also enjoyed things like moxibustion, burning dried mugwort on specific points. Sounds relaxing, right? China wasn't a medical hermit kingdom. They traded their medical knowledge like they were trading silk scarves. Fun fact, smallpox inoculation, which saved countless lives, originated in China and eventually reached Europe, revolutionizing disease prevention, although they probably didn't have the cute cartoon band-aids we do today. America, bloodletting, booze, and the rise of science. Thank goodness. Early American medicine was like a Wild West saloon brawl of medical practices. You had European traditions, Native American remedies, and whatever crazy concoctions the local healer cooked up in their basement. Bloodletting, a practice based on the idea that bad humors caused illness, was surprisingly popular, despite its questionable effectiveness. Seriously, just imagine the doctor saying, you seem a bit under the weather, let's drain some blood. The 19th century brought a much needed scientific revolution to American medicine. We finally started figuring out how our bodies actually work, which led to things like anesthesia. Thank the medical gods for that. The 20th century saw an explosion of medical advancements in America. Antibiotics, vaccines, and fancy new surgical techniques became the norm, leading to a dramatic leap in life expectancy. Today, American healthcare relies heavily on pharmaceuticals, technology, and a whole army of specialized doctors who you might spend a small fortune just to see for five minutes. The future, a mashup of needles and pills. Despite their different paths through history, both China and America are starting to see the value of combining traditional and modern practices. Scientists are looking at the science behind traditional Chinese medicine, TCM, while Chinese hospitals are embracing Western technologies. Who knows, maybe the future of healthcare will involve a delightful blend of acupuncture needles and prescription pills. Just don't picture it too literally, please. 
Bonus fun facts. Did you know foot binding, the painful custom of deforming women's feet, wasn't outlawed in China until the early 20th century? Talk about barbaric beauty standards. The US Civil War, with its horrific injuries and primitive medical care, serves as a chilling reminder of just how far medicine has come. Seriously, if you ever need a reason to be thankful for modern antibiotics, just Google Civil War gangrene. Both China and America still struggle with making healthcare accessible and affordable for everyone. But hey, at least we're not sticking leeches on people anymore, right? Right? This whirlwind tour through medical history proves that even the most serious topics can be a chuckle fest. Remember, laughter is the best medicine, although some actual medicine might be helpful too. So the next time you encounter a medical mystery, whether it's a skyrocketing bill or a sudden craving for acupuncture, just remember, it's all part of the hilarious and sometimes frustrating adventure called healthcare. Okay, enough history for now. Let's ditch the dusty textbooks and dive headfirst into this hilarious medical mystery. While in China, an American single man acts promiscuous and does not use protection the entire time he is there. A week after arriving back home in the States, he wakes one morning to find his swimsuit area covered with bright green and purple spots. Horrified, he immediately goes to see a doctor. The doctor, never having seen anything like this before, orders some tests and tells the man to return in two days for the results. After two days, the doctor tells him, I've got bad news for you. You have contracted Mongolian VD. It's very rare and almost unheard of here in the US. We know very little about it. The man perplexed asks, Well, can't you give me a shot or something to fix me up, doc? The doctor answers, I'm sorry, there's no known cure. We are going to have to amputate. Wait, what? The man screams in horror. Absolutely not. I want a second opinion. The doctor replies, Well, it's your choice. Go ahead if you want, but surgery is your only option. The man shops around, going to many doctors and experts. But they all tell him the same. They must remove the organ. At some point, a friend tells him, You contracted this in China, right? Then why not go to a Chinese doctor? The man, having not thought of that, seeks out a Chinese doctor in the hopes he'll know more about the disease. The Chinese doctor examines the problematic area and proclaims, Ah, yes, Mongolian VD, very rare disease. The guy says to the doctor, Yeah, yeah, I already know that. But what can we do? My American doctor wants to cut off my organ. The Chinese doctor shakes his head and laughs. Stupid American doctors always want to operate. Make more money that way. No need to amputate. Oh, thank God. Yes, yes, you wait two more weeks. Um, it will fall off by itself. <laughs> In our second funny story of the week, we delve into alcohol and the reason people get more clever, or so they think, when they get tipsy. In today's funny story joke, ever wondered why your Uncle Larry, after a six-pack, suddenly becomes a geopolitical expert? Yeah, me neither. But some folks swear a few drinks make them smarter, sharper, basically Einstein's with a beer belly. Well, buckle up, because science is about to blow your mind, or what's left of it after that tequila shot. Stay tuned until the end of the joke. Now, picture Mother Nature as a gym teacher with a clipboard, ruthlessly weeding out the weaklings. Predators snag the slowest gazelles. The lions with bad knees get kicked out of the pride. Talk about a savage retirement plan. It's all about survival of the fittest, you see. Doctors, those party poopers, will tell you booze kills brain cells. True, but here's the juicy secret they don't want you to know. It's like a cosmic game of whack-a-mole, but with your brain. Alcohol targets the laziest, most useless brain cells, the ones that send messages slower than a sloth on vacation. Think of them as the pigeons of the brain world, just taking up space and crapping all over your good ideas. Imagine your brain as a pride of lions. In this pride, you've got your strong, fast lions and your weak, slow ones. The strong lions are the brain cells that work efficiently, processing thoughts and memories quickly. The weak lions are the brain cells that are sluggish, 
struggling to keep up with the rest. When you take a drink, it's like a predator entering the pride. The alcohol, that ruthless hunter, targets the weak lions first, those slow, inefficient brain cells. It's survival of the fittest. The weak lions get picked off, leaving the strong, agile ones to dominate the pride. With fewer weak lions in the way, the pride, your brain, can function more efficiently. Thoughts move faster, ideas come quicker, and suddenly you feel like a genius, at least until the buzz wears off. History's littered with examples, philosophers pondering life's mysteries after a flagon of wine, writers churning out bestsellers after a few pints, looking at you, Hemingway, with your questionable icebergs. These geniuses weren't just indulging vices, they were conducting high-powered brain cell purges. But, and it's a big but, moderation is key. Just as too many predators would decimate the pride, too much alcohol can overwhelm your brain. If all the lions, weak and strong, get taken out, you're left with a pride that's struggling to function. Your brain turns into a chaotic mess, like a rush hour traffic jam with no one in control. And nobody's a genius when they're stuck in that kind of gridlock, especially the kind with flashing police lights. So, raise a glass, responsibly of course, to the great brain cell purge. Cheers to sharper minds, faster thinking, and hopefully, not forgetting where you parked the car. Remember folks, even the mightiest lions need to rest. Too much of a good thing can turn your mental savanna into a barren wasteland. And if you do drink too much, don't worry. Just tell everyone you're on a brain detox cleanse. Trust me, it sounds way fancier than I got hammered and lost my car keys. Cheers to smarter lions and fewer embarrassing stories. <laughs> In our third funny story, we bring you an old man and a problem with, shall we just say, a little worm and hairspray. Hairspray. Fancy glue for your head or secret rocket fuel. You decide. In today's funny story joke, we ditch the chemicals and go full Willy Wonka with sugar water hairspray. Spoiler alert, it's gonna get messy. Picture this, a mischievous little dude named Timmy teaching his grandpa a lesson or two on how to put certain things back where they belong. Who knew hairspray can be used for that hack? Buckle up, giggle heads, because this sticky showdown has a twist that'll leave you laughing and questioning your childhood beauty hacks. But first, we gotta dive into this sugar-coated extravaganza. Stay tuned. The great hair hold up, hairspray versus sugar water, a sticky showdown for the ages with a shocking twist. Ah, hair. The crowning glory, the main of mystery, and sometimes the tangled mess that mocks our attempts at control. But fear not, fellow follicle wranglers, for we have two valiant warriors in this battle for hold. The mighty hairspray and its surprisingly sweet challenger, sugar water. Buckle up, because this is about to get hilarious and a little scientific. Hairspray, the modern marvel, questionable ingredients edition. Hairspray. It's the pocket-sized bodyguard for your hairstyle, the wind's worst nightmare. A spritz of this stuff and fly away cower in fear, like a rogue feather duster meeting a Roomba on steroids. It offers a range of holding powers, from a gentle wave hello to a gravity-defying ain't nobody moving this mane. However, like any superhero, hairspray has its weaknesses. Overuse transforms your hair from a masterpiece to a crunchy, helmet-like creation more suited for a porcupine convention than a night out. Product buildup becomes a real issue, leaving you with a mane as dull and lifeless as yesterday's toast. Plus, let's not forget the fascinating list of ingredients that often reads like a rejected science experiment. Acrylates copolymer, basically fancy glue for your hair, Great for hold, not so great for brushing. Dimethyl ether and propane. These propel the good stuff and potentially propel you into a sneezing fit if you're not careful. Fragrance. The industry's catch-all term for a secret blend of chemicals that might smell like berries, 
but could actually be distant cousins to rocket fuel, sugar water, the OG hairspray, and the sticky situation. Long before the invention of hairspray, our resourceful ancestors wielded a secret weapon so sweet it could give Willy Wonka a sugar rush. Sugar water. Yes, you heard that right. This DIY concoction involved dissolving a bathtub full of sugar, because cavities were clearly a fad back then, in water and using it as a styling agent. Hold? Think more of a gentle suggestion than a firm grip. A strong breeze could send your carefully crafted hair flying faster than a squirrel on Red Bull. But hold on, pun intended, because sugar water has one undeniable advantage, shine. You'd basically become a walking disco ball, guaranteed to light up any room, or at least confuse everyone around you. Rain, however, would be your ultimate nemesis, transforming your hairstyle into a melted lollipop situation not ideal for a first date, unless you're going for the human candy floss look. The science of hold, hairspray versus hair roots. Now, let's delve into the nitty gritty of hair biology. Hair grows from tiny pockets in your scalp, called follicles. These follicles produce a protein called keratin, which is the main building block of hair. Here's where our hair warriors come in. Hairspray. While hairspray works its magic on the hair shaft, the visible part of your hair, it doesn't directly affect the hair follicle at the root. However, excessive use can lead to product buildup on the scalp, potentially clogging pores and hindering hair growth. Think of it like blocking the doorway to your hair's personal gym. Sugar water. This sticky situation doesn't offer much hold, but the sugar content can actually feed the scalp microbiome the good bacteria that live there. A healthy scalp microbiome can contribute to healthy hair growth. However, too much sugar can also disrupt this delicate balance, leading to irritation and potential hair loss. Alrighty, giggleheads, ditch the hairspray. For now, because things are about to get sticky. We're talking sugar water, vintage vibes, and a hair-raising showdown that'll leave you questioning your childhood beauty hacks, and maybe a little worried about ants. Forget the fancy chemicals and rocket fuel disguised as a pleasant mist. We're going full Willy Wonka with DIY hair control. Now, here's the twist. Grandpa John watched how little Timmy pulled a worm out of the ground and told him that if he could put it back in, he would give him a hundred bucks. Little Timmy left for a bit and said, Okay, Grandpa, watch this. Timmy then pushed the worm right back down the hole it came out from. Grandpa got out the ten bucks and gave it to Timmy. Timmy said, Grandpa, I can't keep this because I cheated. I sprayed the worm with hairspray. That's why I was able to do that. No, you keep it. The next morning at breakfast, Grandpa walked to Timmy and gave him another 10 bucks. No, Grandpa, you already paid me. That money was from Grandma. <laughs> In the last funny story of today's compilation, we bring you, as promised, our best story of the week. After the joke, should you want to get notified of next week's compilation or when we publish new content, then please press the subscribe button and the bell icon, and you will get notified of any new content. Thanks for watching. Here goes. In today's funny story, we meet a passionate marriage counselor with a shocking discovery. It turns out there's a clear link between well, let's just say it involves some fun between spouses and a whole lot of happiness and energy. But hold on, there's a twist. This counselor sets out on a mission to spread the good word, but during a live presentation, things get a little unexpected. Will his research hold water, or is there something more to this story? Stay tuned until the end of the joke for a laugh that'll leave you wanting more. A marriage counselor has done intensive research on the connection between making love and happiness. The results are not as simple as they sound. Many people claim that they have all sorts of pains and look for excuses not to make love on a regular basis. Then why would they do it if they are not happier without it? However, the marriage counselor found that the more times a person makes love, the happier they are. And not only that, making love regularly also has other benefits, such as giving one much more energy for your daily tasks. 
He then made it his calling to spread the message throughout the country and thus make many more people happy and energetic. He begins a countrywide tour to present his message of marriage revival through a small course. He travels from town to town and invites the people to attend the first day of his course for free. During his lecture, he illustrates his research by interactive means. He asks the audience, can we please get a person on stage who makes love daily? From the back of the hall, a man came running onto the stage while shadow boxing between the chairs. It's a clear sign of a man who has an excess of energy. Secondly, he asks the audience if there might be someone who makes love twice a week to come to the stage. A man stands up, walks briskly towards the stage while whistling a tune. Now he is looking for a person who makes love every second week on a Sunday afternoon after lunch. He asks such a person to come to the stage. There is a man standing slowly out of his chair and walks slowly towards the stage while he is constantly yawning. Clearly this man needs a lot more energy. Now he asks the audience if there might be someone who makes love only once a month and can such a person please come to the stage. In the front row is a man who can barely get up from his chair. The people next to him must help him to get up properly. He walks very slowly towards the stage but doesn't have the energy to get up the steps. The other men who are already on the stage then help him up the steps. So far, the interactive illustration has worked very well and all the people's mouths are literally hanging open as witness interactive illustration. The energy of the men who joined the marriage counselor on stage is exactly in line with his research. Now, just to put the nail in the coffin, he asks for the last time if there might be a man in the hall who makes love only once a year. If there is such a man, then can this person please come to the stage? He understands that such a person has no energy at all, and if he must then, they will be helped to get to the stage. To his amazement, a guy jumps up in the back of the crowd, does a bunch of cartwheels down the aisle between the spectators, and just jumps from the bottom to the top of the stage. The man does this by shouting, Kia ha, you old devil. The marriage counselor is now dumbfounded because such energy runs counter to his experience and research. He asks the man, Are you sure that you only make love once a year? Yes, said the man with a broad smile on his face. The marriage counselor then asks for the man. Now my research shows energy levels in relation to the frequency with which you make love. Also, you would have seen from all the people who accompanied us on stage that this is in line with my research. Now tell me where all your energy comes from. The man answered. Excitement. That's where my energy comes from. Excitement, please explain to us what you are so excited about. The marriage counselor asks. The man got the biggest smile the marriage counselor had ever seen and answered. Tonight is that night. <laughs> if you liked our joke, then please watch our next joke by clicking here.